So another short video here to talk about the period of a periodic function. Lots of little short videos and then we're going to put them together into something bigger. So the period of a periodic function is the distance that it takes the function to repeat. Imagine you were on a roller coaster. This cosine function starts at the top and you go wee, and then you're back at the top again and then you start again. Wee, and then you're back at the start top again and you start again. The period of this function is the horizontal distance from there to there, or from there to there, the bottom to the bottom, or from the middle to, and this is the middle heading down, from the middle to the middle heading down. It's not from the middle to the middle, because this is the middle heading down, the scary part, and this is the middle heading up, the bit where you're anticipating the roller coaster. That's not the period. It's the time, it's the distance that it takes for our function to repeat. So drawing it in, top of the roller coaster, top of the roller coaster, the period of this function is from here to here, which is 360. I could draw this in a different way, like I said. I could draw it in from this point to this point, and I could draw that in, and we can see from 450 to 90, the distance there is 360. I could also measure it from here to that next point here, which is um, 540. And if I measure it from that distance to that distance, no surprises, it's going to be 360. Doesn't matter how you measure it, you're just measuring from where it repeats to where it repeats. Now, we can change the period of the function by changing something about the function itself. Watch this. We can see that by adding a 2 in here, We've changed the period of this function. The function's period has actually halved. You can see the top is here now at zero still, and then 180. Watch as I move this B value back to here. This is just cos x, the one, it was there all the time, we just don't need it there. All right, so period, zero to 360. B of two, zero to 180. B of three, zero to 120. So we can see that there's a relationship between b and the period of this periodic function, but it's not a direct, um, it's not a relationship where like the period is one and b is one. We actually need to do a little bit of heavy lifting here, just, just a little bit. So let's write that down. So here's the important notes for you. Finding the period from a b value. If y equals cos bx, where b is a number, then the period of the equation is given by period equals 360 divided by b. Okay, so if we use this as our example right there, then we can say that the period of this function is going to be equal to period equals 360 divided by our b value, which is 3. So the period is going to be 120. We'll use 120 there as our period. Right, and you can see that looks about right. It takes 0 to here to repeat, which if we sort of are very careful about drawing in pictures here, we should end up with 120. All right, that formula is gold. It's really important that you understand that the period is related to the B value, but you can't just look at the B value. You need to do a little bit of maths. Uh, in the next video, we're going to put amplitude and period together and be able to either sketch functions or find the equation of functions.